Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to another episode here of Let's Play Minecraft. A huge thank you as always for all of your lovely support throughout this series, my friends. I truly do appreciate it. Of course, if we can keep it up with a thousand likes per episode as a bit of a like goal for the episodes in this series, that would be absolutely lovely. Of course, though, if you want to go one further with your support, go ahead and use code Python when ordering any sneak energy drinks or to get 5% off any of my Apex gaming PCs. In the last episode, we got ourselves situated over here at our brand new beach resort area. Yeah, and it was the first episode where we properly updated to the 1.19 pre-releases. Now then, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to lock these maps so they don't accidentally update. So we're going to try and pop them off in order here. And then all we need to do is head into a cartography table with a bunch of glass panes, which as you can see, we've got a whole bunch going on now. And then we pop into the cartography table. Then we put the glass panes in here. That will bring up this lock symbol here. Here, and that means that all of these maps here will no longer update. Ah, oh, darn it. I just realized maybe what I should have done first is I should have gone ahead and duplicated these maps. Ah, rats. Well, I should have thought about that, huh? Can't you tell this is a morning recording? I am not quite with it yet, apparently. <laughs> All right, let's do this properly, shall we? So there we are. Duplicated map. Then we put the glass pane in, eh? Yep, that's the way we do it, my friends. I wonder, can you go ahead and unlock the map if you simply duplicate it? Is that is that something that's even possible? Uh, no, they are indeed both locked. Okay, well, we need to go ahead and do these maps over again, the uh, top row. The good news is getting these maps done is actually pretty simple. There we are, we're back on there, and that is all done and dusted. So now we have a locked version and an unlocked version of the top row of maps. So the maps that are going on the map wall are, of course, the locked maps. All right, so here we go. So even if we need to move this map wall, the area should never update. It's this load of maps here that will Wind up updating. And as time goes on, we probably do want to go ahead and update these maps so we can see what kind of progress we're making with this area. Whoa! Hey guys, check it out! A frog made its way over to the desert here. Oh! Oh, whoa! Wow! <laughs> oh, you're adorable there, buddy. I'm just now realizing as well, since we have actually updated to the 1.19 update, we can go ahead and search for ancient cities amongst other places now, huh? Oh, snap. We've got lots of things we can do. However, what we're going to be doing in today's episode is we are going to be making a start on our base build here. And I've got a pretty good idea as to what I want to do. It's going to require lots of mud, lots of mangrove wood, a little bit of sandstone, and some mudstone as well. So, yeah, using all the new things. All right, my friends. So, the first thing I'm trying to determine is where the exact center of the this middle area is, right? Uh, well, the thing is, that map wall, I think, might just about mark it. Eh, if not, maybe this azalea tree? Huh. The reason I want to find the center is because we're going to have ourselves a whopping great circular build in the middle here, and it's going to look amazing. But uh, yeah, I really do need to try and find the center here. Alrighty, my friends, we've got our camera account on here, just so we can see if we can determine where the center is a little bit better. Uh, the nether portal might be the center, actually. Huh. I don't know. But anyways, the fact of the matter is this. We have ourselves a good amount of space to work with. But as I mentioned before, we need to go ahead and put down a bunch of sand so we actually have some more land to build on, right? So, yeah, there's lots of sand we're going to be needing to fill up this area a little bit, huh? <laughs> the good news, of course, is the fact that we've got more desert sort of round the back here and sort of surrounding this entire area. So getting ourselves a ton of sand for a bunch of landscaping. I mean, look at this. There's loads of it. Getting a bunch of sand shouldn't be any difficulty whatsoever, my friends. And I know before you guys say so, we have, of course, got ourselves a couple of shulker boxes full of sand. But the reason I got that was mostly so that we could go ahead and create ourselves concrete later down the line. So, uh, yeah, I don't really want to be using Using that if I can help it. If there's one thing about the caves and cliffs update that's starting to wear a little bit thin on me, it's the fact that there's little micro cave entrances literally everywhere. 
Like, seriously, we've got this little sort of cave entrance here. We've got ourselves another big old cave entrance here. It's just everywhere, man. There's caves literally everywhere. I actually kind of miss the old terrain generation when it comes to caves in some respects. Obviously, for the most part, they are absolutely fantastic. But I feel like the generation does need to be tweaked somewhat. Like, all I want to do around here is build. And yet, there's just caves everywhere, man. All right, well, I guess what we're going to have to do is make ourselves a bunch of sandstone. Maybe put ourselves a layer of sandstone down. And then, oh, goodness me. And then just go ahead and, uh, oh, wow. And then just put, like, a top cover of sand over. Over it, huh? That'll probably be the easiest way to do this. But uh, yeah, the whole novelty of having caves generate everywhere. That's kind of one very, very thin for me. Do any of you guys remember the old 404 seed from way back in the day? You would go ahead and dig out. It was either sand or gravel. And all of a sudden, a whopping great cave entrance would present itself to you because all of the sand would fall into it. You know? Can you guys remember that? I'm getting some serious 404 vibes while I'm going ahead and uh, digging out all of this sand here. <laughs> Ah, oh, the old days. I do remember what I was saying about not going ahead and covering up all of the water sources here. But what I think I'll do just to start off is to do that. And then we will sort of restore the water later down the line once we've actually got some builds going on here. And we want to start sprucing it up a little bit with some water. The immediate thought that I had in mind would be that we would have like a river that sort of flows through the middle here. I mean, we've got two oceans. Having a river connect the two oceans, I feel, would be the logical way to go, right? So... Yeah, maybe we go ahead and do that later down the line. Create ourselves a nice custom river. Yeah, that's a good idea, my friendos. You know what, my friends? This is a way taller task than I first anticipated. So I think probably the best way to show you guys the progress, of course, is to do a time lapse. Let's bring on our camera count and let's get this thing underway. has arrived and with it a progress update the time lapse is done 90 minutes later two whole shovels later and we have ourselves a whopping whopping great area here to work with and i'll tell you what i'm glad that we've got this thing done my friend i mean just look at it guys there's so much space for building it is actually kind of ridiculous isn't it i can't remember the last time i did a landscaping project this large as well so uh, you know pat on the back to myself for you know getting this thing done all during the time lapse as well i was doing my best to try and determine where the center of this area is and i've kind of decided that this azalea tree is the center of this area and i also decided maybe it could become a little bit of a featurette inside of my new base now in order to get started on our new base we're gonna need an absolute ton of mangrove wood a little bit of mud and and a little bit of mud stone. So I guess without further ado, we need to grab ourselves a bunch of this here mud. Ah, interesting. So the type of mud that I was wanting to get is actually packed 
sucked mud. I had absolutely no idea that you would need wheat in order to create it. The good news, of course, is that we've got ourselves the farmer's guild area. We need only do ourselves a bit of a harvest and we can get ourselves some packed mud. What the? Right, I'm not being funny, but you're kind of taking the biscuit there, Mr. Piglin. And the thing is, I do not believe, well, I don't know, maybe I could go ahead and sort of break the boat. <laughs> okay, good Uh, That was actually done pretty painlessly. Huh. Alright, coolio. I thought I'd have to kill the piglin, but, uh, no, everything's fine. Apparently the piglins are playing Grand Theft Boto. So here we are back at the main base, ladies and gentlemen. Let's pop in through the Farmer's Guild and see if we can't get ourselves a few stacks of wheat. I'm thinking maybe three stacks of wheat to make ourselves three stacks of packed mud will do the job. Uh, yeah, all right, let's do ourselves a harvest. I think this is actually the first time I've ever actually harvested around here. The good news is we've actually got three stacks of wheat on the dot, and there's probably, if I had to estimate, maybe one stack more wheat to be harvested here. Yeah, all right, pretty cool. Let's go and grab ourselves our packed mud here. Yeah, check it out. We can make ourselves mud bricks as well, which is awesome. But to be honest, I mean, this is just about all we need for our build today. So we've got the mud. We've got the packed mud. I've actually already got sandstone. So the last element is, in fact, the mangrove wood. Actually, when it comes down to it, I'm pretty glad we came back to base because I was starting to get a little bit on the low side when it came to our food supply. So, yeah, yeah, all the wins. Alrighty, my friends. Well, I guess we can make at least a little bit of a start on this thing. We don't have the mangrove wood just yet, but what I can do is lay down the floor and therefore the footprint this build is going to leave. So let's go ahead and make a bit of a start. As I mentioned, this azalea tree is basically going to be the centerpiece of this build here. Now, what is going to happen is we are going to have packed mud surrounding it because, I mean, just look at it. It's a pretty cool looking block, isn't it? It actually goes really, really well with sand. So we've got the centerpiece here. In, we're now going to add in a bunch of paths going off the side and all of these paths of course will be using the packed mud that we've got going on then we'll have a layer of sandstone as a bit of a rim and then around the edges in each of the quarters that are going to be forming here we'll have ourselves the mud on the floor oh interesting i just discovered something guys you can insta mine the packed mud huh Okay, well, that'll be kind of useful. All right, so pathways have been added in. We are now going to add in a little bit of a sandstone rim just to sort of define the pathways here a little bit. Yes, yeah, so how about it, eh, friendos? We have ourselves some mud going on here and things are starting to take shape. Yeah, very, very cool. Obviously, once we get the mangrove wood in, we'll be able to have a slightly better idea as to how this is going to to be looking. But for now, like I say, we're just getting the floor down. And then, yeah, we'll see if we can't get ourselves a whole bunch of mangrove wood to start placing down as the structure. All right. So far, so good, eh, guys? So far, so good. All right. So the question is, how difficult is it going to be to get ourselves a good supply of mangrove wood? Because, well, I don't know about you guys. I am seeing a lot of the rooted mangrove bits but I'm not seeing too much of the actual wood itself. Oh dear. All right, there's some wood up there, I guess, which is kind of cool. Uh, the only thing is, I don't really want to be deforesting either of these. I kind of want to go somewhere entirely different to go ahead and get ourselves mangrove wood, really. Uh, so where can we go? There's a little bit over here, which we can maybe mine up. Well, the answer to the question is eh, fairly easy to get a good amount of mangrove logs here. Look at it. It just keeps on coming and coming and coming. This is great. Better still, you can go ahead and instant mine the rooted bits here the mangrove root so that's a pretty big win i would say i wonder how difficult or easy it would be to create a mangrove tree farm because obviously this tree is pretty much unlike any other tree in minecraft you know shape wise maybe what we need to do is drop tnt down on it from the top or something rather similar to ethos tree farm on his let's play world but to be honest with you guys i wouldn't have the first clue on how to go ahead 
ahead and create that sort of farm. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe that's a project for the very far future. But now, though, we're getting ourselves a decent amount of mangrove, which is good. Maybe we go ahead and start planting down these here proper gules so we can get ourselves some more. Huh. Well, there's me thinking you could only place these proper gules on mud. Uh, no. It looks like they can be placed just about anywhere. Aside from sand, of course. That does make sense. But, uh, yeah. We're going to restore the mangrove forest here. Hey, <laughs> Oh, wow. That one already grew. Huh. That didn't take very long, did it? <laughs> the good news is you do seem to get a fairly decent amount of wood per tree, which I think is a big old win. So, yeah. That's kind of nice, man. That's kind of nice. Uh, any more wood here? Nope, I think that's just about it. All right, well, let's go ahead and get rid of all the rest of this, and we should be good. Oh, yeah. So then, all we need to do is add in our mangrove frame surrounding this, and the idea is basically that this winds up almost being like a teepee tent kind of deal, in that it goes up to a point in the center above the azalea tree there. I thought that would be a really, really lovely idea for this area. So in terms of the main structure, in terms of, you know, the pillars here, we're going to be using the mangrove logs, but around the edges, to add a little bit more structure, to this thing, what I thought could be a good idea is if we were to go ahead and add in the mangrove roots, okay, and then maybe sort of one block further back, we could have ourselves a whole bunch of the leaves here. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think of that, huh? The only thing is, though, the color of the leaves here, it really doesn't work very well. I want to have a nice, nice, lush green looking base here. Azalea leaves might be the way to go, huh? I don't know, man. I just really don't like the color of the mangrove leaves in this biome here. If they were a nice, lush green, rather like this here, I would have no issues with going ahead and using it. But yeah, I don't want this to be a dead looking base. See, it's times like this, my friends. I'm real glad that I bought a supply of bone blocks because we could go ahead and force grow these proper gules, get ourselves some mangrove. Oh, yeah. Looking good, baby. We get a little bit more. And, uh, oh. Oh. I had absolutely no idea that the mangrove roots here could completely replace the proper gules that are sort of on the floor already. Well, that's kind of not cool, isn't it? Huh. All right. Well, uh, never mind. Let's go ahead and uh, grow another one. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. These grow really tall. Wow. And I'm just now realizing if we're wanting a whole bunch of these leaves here, the azalea leaves, we're going to need a bunch of azalea trees. What I'd like to have happen is we get ourselves some azalea bushes out of it and then we can grow some more trees out of it. Come on, baby. I just realized something, guys. We're so focused on trying to get leaves in here that I didn't consider a very, very obvious option. What if I just put some simple fences on top of here? Then we can have ourselves a nice sort of open plan feeling area, right? You know? Yeah, that might not be a bad idea. We add a bit of red into the build with the mangrove wood. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Making some good progress, my friends. Now, unfortunately, we're going to need quite a lot more mangrove wood because I need to make the supports that are going to go up to the central point there. And then we need to figure out what material we're going to be using to sort of add the cover in between the pillars, right? Trust me, you guys don't even want to know how long I've spent on this episode so far. Grabbing mangrove logs is actually kind of a pain in the butt. There's no, like, easy easy way to do it. Not really. Not as far as I know anyway. So uh, yeah, anyways, we still got a few mangrove logs here, which is great. But let's be honest, the elephant in the room is the fact that we've actually got the shape looking good. So what we need to do now is we need to grab out these here mangrove roots. We need to make sure that we sort of connect up the circle here. And it's going to be sort of like an inner circle. And then once we've managed to get that done, we can start Start trying to figure out the resources we are going to be using for the sort of filler in the middle here. Because obviously we don't want this to be completely open. The sides can be open, uh, you know, with a fence obviously so no one can get in. Uh, but aside from that, yeah, we need to figure out something to put in the middle here. Oh, dude, this looks even better from afar, dude. Look at it, man. Oh, this is great. I love this. This is such a nice looking build, isn't it? 
Oh, I can't wait to start populating this place with all of our various bits and bobs. This could be like a central hub area for all of the builds that are going to be happening around here. Wait a minute. We have mud bricks, right? My original plan was to go ahead and use mangrove fences, but actually... I don't know, man. Let's see how they look, first of all, before we make any decisions. Uh, that actually looks really good. Huh. I did kind of have the idea in mind that maybe we could use uh, mudstone brick walls instead. But actually, this works kind of nicely. So, let's go ahead and roll with it. You know what? I've just had a brainwave, guys. I know exactly what I'm going to be using on the roof here. We are going to grab ourselves a bunch of dirt and then convert it into moss blocks. We're going to have ourselves a nice green roof. Ah, uh, I knew I had a shulker box full of dirt. Yeah. All right. So, basically, what you do is you place down a bunch of dirt. Then you put one moss block in there randomly and then use bone meal on it and it will convert all of your nearby blocks into moss as well. Well, it's starting to get there, my friends. And one thing I am trying to do with this particular section is I'm actually not making it symmetrical. I'm trying to make it look sort of more organic just by adding in some sort of like random layers like all over the place. So we'll continue on with a little bit more here. Uh, that can sort of bend around there. That can bend around there. And then we can sort of make this go up to a point. And then we've got this. This little section to be done as well, but that should be easily done. And then we start spreading in the moss, guys. Whoa! It's so dark under here now, friendos. Oh my gosh. All right, well, all we gotta do is turn it green. So let's see how this goes, huh? We chuck in a piece of moss. Bone meal it. Oh, <laughs> oh, this is one of my favorite things to do, my friends. It truly is spreading greenery like an absolute champ. Oh, look at it, guys. Look at it. Look at how much nature is here now. Oh, this is great. All right. All we need to do now is look at it from afar and gush in its beautiful glory. Oh, that is good. I love that. <laughs> Oh, that's really, really good, in fact. Hey! Hey, 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 hey! Oh, goodness me. I forgot to go ahead and uh, light up in there. Um, now we've got a rudimentary mob farm. Whoops! <laughs> oh, uh, that's kind of interesting. I had no idea that the moss would also replace mud. I mean, it does kind of make sense, doesn't it? But uh, yeah, this actually does need to be mud because that's just what I want it to be. How on earth did it spread from the roof to the floor, though? That is mad, isn't it? <laughs> So, in terms of the infrastructure, this place is, in fact, finished. And I tell you what, my friends, I'm so glad that we spent the time to get this done because it looks absolutely glorious. I'm sure you guys would agree, huh? It looks pretty cool. Come on. So then, on that epic note, it is indeed time to wrap up today's episode. We do, of course, have the comment of the day to do first, though. Do not prickle says, hey, Python, will you make a mangrove swamp house in the mangrove forest? It would be cool and fun. Love your channel. Hey, buddy, thank you so much for the kind words. And absolutely, the whole point of this area is we basically start off in the central desert here, and then eventually we will indeed branch out into the mangrove mangrove swamps themselves. And I've got some pretty cool ideas in mind as to what we can do. I'm thinking we have like campfires everywhere. We have houses on stilts everywhere in here. We have like full on settlements beneath the canopy there. Canopy City version 3 or version 4 question mark? Who knows man? But anyways for now though my friends it is time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching my friends. I truly have spent a ridiculous amount of time on today's episode. So if you have enjoyed today's episode and you want to support the series and this channel then I'd very much appreciate it if you would head down below the video and drop a like. It really does help out myself, the video, and the channel. It just helps to get the video out there to more people. Hit the subscribe button if you're new around here and you don't want to miss out on my future content. But for now, my friends, thanks for watching. Have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye!